Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about different types of lumber. How can you tell the difference between an oak and a maple and a white oak and a cherry and a walnut and there are so many different types of lumber out there, how can you tell them apart? So today I want to actually dive into this and show you some of the little differences that you can key on that will at least give you an idea to go in the right direction so that next time you're looking at that piece of lumber and wondering, hmm, I wonder what this is, you'll have some ideas or at least know where to go to look. Now I have a video all about how to identify trees. So when they're out growing and you look at the nuts on the ground and the bark and the type of leaf, how can you identify what type of tree that is? So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that down below. It's one of my most watched videos. And so I thought it was about the time to say, well, it's no longer a tree, it's now lumber. How can you tell what the lumber is? It's usually about once or twice a week I get an email or someone puts a picture up on Facebook where they say, uh, what wood is this? And it's kind of a blurry image of just a snapshot of the grain. And honestly, you can't tell what the wood is. Now, if you've been working with wood for a while, you might have some good ideas. But there's a bunch of other things you need to do in order to identify the wood. So I want to actually look at that particularly. Now, before I go and say anything more, the absolute best way to find out about different types of woods and get to know all these different characteristics is to use them. Until you actually use the wood and you play with it, you know what it feels like, you know what it smells like, you know what its characteristics are, you'll never be able to tell the difference between most of the lumbers out there. And in a lot of the trees there is a big gray area where it could be this or it could be that and you'll never really know because you don't have the leaves and the bark and other things to look at. But all that being said, the best way to learn what wood is is to work with different types of wood. And the more wood you work with, the more you start to identify, oh, oh, that's white oak, yeah, I like that stuff. Now, one of the first things to know about wood is ring porosity. So you might know all of these rings. Every year a tree grows, it gets one more ring, and so each one of these tiny rings is another year of growth. Yes, it took a long time to make this piece of red oak. Another thing you'll notice on this red oak is that on each of these rings, there are a whole bunch of tiny, tiny little holes. I don't know if you can see that in the video here, but then you'll come in a little farther and then you'll see that there's no holes and there's a ring of holes and then there's no holes and there's a ring of holes. And what this is called, this is called ring porous. All of the pores are in the ring. They're not spread out throughout the wood. So every ring has a row of pores and then a row without pores and then a row of pores and a row without pores. Ring porous wood. So next up I have some cherry and this is incredibly fast growing cherry. You can see here from one ring to the next that's a whole year's growth. Um, so you know this cherry tree grew really, really quickly. But the thing you're going to notice is you don't see any of the pores. There isn't a whole ring of pores right up close to it. They're all spread out through the wood. And with cherry you have to get really, really close because these pores are absolutely tiny. But they are completely all the way through the wood. So there's tiny pores, far smaller pores, but completely covered in through the wood rather than all being tight into a ring line. This is called diffuse porous wood. Then there's the next thing, and that's usually what people think about first, and that is hardness. How hard is the wood? Now the way they test hardness is they take a steel ball bearing and they put it in the wood and they push it down into the wood. And however much force it takes to push that ball bearing down into the wood, half of its diameter is how hard the wood is. And that's called the Jenka hardness. And different woods have different Jenka hardnesses. So in this case, white oak is somewhere around a 1300 Jenka hardness. So it is, it is a very, very hard, hard wood. Uh, red oak is usually something around 11 to 1200. So it's, it's still hard, but not quite as hard as most white oaks. But then you can go up to things like maple. Maple is like uh, 1400 to 1500 um, hard maple, the, the sugar maple. Um, so it's an incredibly hard wood. But then you have other things like box elder with these red uh, fire flames in it. This is actually a maple as well, but it is a type of soft maple. And this is actually somewhere around 700. So in comparison to these, it's incredibly soft, but yet it can have a lot of the same characteristics as hard maple. And then we have here red maple. And so this is another soft maple. It's a fairly, uh, very common uh, maple. Most of the time when you have a soft maple, it is a red maple. Uh, this one is actually somewhere around 900 Jenka hardness. So it's harder than the box elder, but not quite as hard as the sugar maple. And the reason I bring that up is I start looking at these lumbers and I ask myself, how hard is this? Now, just feeling the wood, you really can't tell how hard it is. You might be able to tell by its weight that this is a little bit heavier than this is by size. Uh, this is a, a large piece of wood. Just to let you know, this is actually an upcoming project where I'm cutting a tree down and turning a bit inch with joinery and everything using just a half inch chisel. But something like this that's a little bit softer, I can 
almost push my thumbnail into it. And I can, I can, I can get a bit of a, a grab on that with my thumbnail. With the red maple, it's softer. I can get a little bit less in there. I come up here to the hard maple and I can't. My, my thumbnail is not going to do anything into the hard maple. Um, same thing with the white oak. I, my, my thumbnail is not going to do anything into the white oak. And so these are some of the characteristics you have to start to learn and how do they feel. A hard, smooth wood like maple. Maple is diffuse porous, so it doesn't have those holes running through the rings. Hard wood like this, when you run the plane over that, it has a very smooth texture to it. It feels like butter, but because it's hard, you put more force into the plane you have to take a thinner curl. Then you could bring in something like cherry. Cherry is softer than the hard maple. It's actually pretty close to the soft maple in its hardness. But it is also a diffuse porous wood, so you get a very buttery smooth surface and you don't have to put quite as much force into it as you would into your hard maple. So it's all these characteristics that start to come together to be able to identify what the wood is. Now you may have noticed I haven't actually talked about the color of the wood, and that's because the color of the wood can vary incredibly over time. Cherry for once. Uh, right now this has been sitting in my shop so it's a little bit darker and if I put this out in the sun for a month or two it will come incredibly dark. I can get this almost as dark as I would with my black walnut. But if I were to plane this down and bring it to smooth new wood it would look almost as soft as maple. It is a very, very varying wood. Then you get into walnut, which has a really dark wood, but the sap is incredibly light. It's almost as light as maple when you clean it up and sand it. So you can actually get a large contrast in there. And if you go into things like poplar, most poplar is this light wood, but you can also get this green and purple and red and this almost, well, look at that. It's almost like a walnut, but this is poplar and this is walnut. If you look at a picture, these two boards look almost identical. But in person and in the feel, they're very different because this is incredibly soft. Poplar, I mean, I can get my thumbnail in there and I can put grooves into it. But poplar is also diffuse porous, so you get a very smooth cut. It is very easy to plane this. The, the plane just runs through it like butter because it is so soft, so smooth. Poplar is an incredibly easy wood to work with hand tools. But then it can get a little confusing because I can grab this. This is a soft wood which means it is a pine. This is a southern yellow pine, which is actually a fairly hard pine. Now, I can get my fingernail into this, but it takes a good bit of force. This pine, which is a softwood, is actually slightly harder than this poplar, which is a hardwood. And hardwood has to do with its leaf. It is a deciduous tree, so the leaves fall off. Softwood is a pine or a fir where the leaves do not fall off in the winter. But then I've got this piece of finished wood, and this I actually have stained. This is hickory. Hickory is an incredibly hard wood. This is harder than the hard maple, but it is ring porous. When you plane this, all of the curls come off in strings, and it's very stringy wood as opposed to the maple, which is a very smooth wood. So it is hard to push through like a hard maple, but it will give you a stringy curl as opposed to the smooth buttery curl of the maple. Now with this stained, if I were to show you someone a picture of this, they would say, ooh, that's oak. But no, it's hickory because it is a ring porous wood. You get a lot of this texture in it, just like you would with an oak. But you can stain woods to make them different. So before actually trying to figure out what the wood is, take the finish off of it so you can see what's underneath. Next, I wanna look at aging. This is red oak, and this is a chunk that was sitting in Matt Cremona's yard for years. I think it's been like uh, five or six years now um, since this has been out there, so it's good and weathered. Now this side was cleaned up with a saw, but this was face down, this was face up. So you can see, this does not look like oak. This looks like something else. But this is the very same wood. I actually pulled this out of another piece of this tree this is the exact same oak as what's underneath here. So you've got to get through this surface before you can see what's underneath. Likewise, this is a piece of 100-year-old Douglas fir that was pulled out of a barn. And here you can see this, this coloring in it. It's a, a beautiful, rich, creamy color. But then you flip it over and you get something that's completely different. That's just the aging. So be ready. Whenever you want to look at the wood, you've got to take the aging off to actually get down and see what's in there. There's also a big difference between rough sawn and planed smooth. The smoother you get it, the lighter it's going to end up looking most of the time. With a few exceptions like walnut, the smoother it gets, the darker it gets. Next, we're going to look at the grain of the wood. You might be able to see some of this figure in here. These are actually the rays in white oak, and white oak has very, very large rays. Um, and they're medullary rays that come from the heart and go to the sapwood on the outside. And with oak, they tend to be large and flat. And so this is a white oak ray. 
They're very, very large, and different types of wood are going to have different rays. One of the big differences between red oak and white oak is that red oak tend to have smaller rays. They're only about a quarter inch tall, whereas in white oak they're often three quarter inch or larger, so they can be much, much larger in white oak than they are in red oak most of the time. But there are some red oaks that look like white oaks, and there are some white oaks that look like red oaks. So there's a lot of a blurring line between these two, and you never quite know until you do a chemical test between the two. But then you can look at other woods like this live oak where it's constantly swirling. And this is, sometimes you'll get a swamp oak, which is a type of white oak, that will look like a live oak. But live oak tends to just be constantly interlocking in the grain. It has very fat rays that you can see in here. These almost dots in here are the rays. So live oak has a very twisted grain, and you'll be able to tell the difference is in grains. Red oaks tend to have a very straight grain. White oaks sometimes have a straight grain, but can have a very wild grain as well, if they, especially if they start getting into something like a swamp oak. And then you have live oaks, which go even more wild. Different types of trees tend to have different things. Walnut has a lot of straight, but it also has a lot of wavy grains as well. Cherry tends to have very straight, very clean grain. And maples as well, those have an incredibly straight grain. So you're gonna be looking at the grain and that's one more thing that you'll have to get to know between woods to know what is this. Next, one of the most important things to learning wood is just knowing what it feels like. I, I can take a plane to white oak and tell you that this white oak is not maple. I can take a plane to cherry and tell you for certain that that cherry is not hickory. And I can take a board to an ash and tell you for certain that is not a pine, just by feeling it and not knowing anything about the wood. The more you get to know the lumber, the more you can feel it, the more you can hear it, the more you can smell it, and every wood has a slightly different texture, a slightly different feel, a slightly different smell. And those are things that I can't tell you over a camera, it just, it feels like this, or it smells like mm, this. Those are things you just have to experience. But the more you experience, the more you start to identify. Now with each of these methods, you can get an idea about a board. Any one of those methods will not tell you what it is. But when you combine them all together, you can look at the board and say, huh, this is a fairly straight grain, but it has really big rays. It's very hard. It's ring porous. It smells, mmm, it smells like white oak. And with all those things, you can get an idea and get closer and closer on it, but only once you have the understanding of what all these woods are. So in the end, really the best way is to actually go through and get to know the woods. Maybe go to a lumber yard and buy a stick of all these different types of woods and play with them. You'd be amazed at how different they are once you actually experience them and feel them and not just run them through a table saw, but pull out the handsaw and, and feel what the grain does with the handsaw. Feel what the plane does when it takes a curl. Look at the curls and compare one curl to another. And it is incredible the difference you can get in woods that might look very, very similar, but have a completely different feel. So this is one of these fun videos where you actually get to dive into this and play with a few things. I'm, I'm sorry this is probably a little longer than normal, but this is one of these topics that you can spend in a lifetime working on and you still not scratch the surface of all the different types of woods and all the different subspecies. And it is an incredibly, incredibly fun topic to play with. And yes, again, the best way to experiment is to get to know the wood and you'll never know that until you know what it feels like, what it smells like, what it looks like, and all those things you just can't get from a video. So I hope this stops you from putting up those pictures on Facebook and other places and saying, oh, what wood is this? Because you're never gonna be able to tell from just a picture. You might get some close ideas, but if you do have to do that, clean the surface off. Get a nice, smooth, still image where it's not shaking. Show a close-up of the end grain as well. Try and show a couple different views so you can see it in a couple different lights. Things like that really help the identification, but they're really not going to tell you instantly, oh yeah, that's this. I would love if there was a tool that you could actually look at and say, uh, what wood is this? And put up a picture or search through some sort of shakedown category. And there are a bunch of websites and apps and things like that that try to do that, but there really is no good way of doing that and saying, is this a light wood? Is this a dark wood? Is this a diffuse porous wood? Is this a ring porous wood? and it really won't get you close enough to tell exactly what it is. So that's why I'm not talking about apps or websites because they might help you a little bit, but not enough to really do that much. So I hope this has helped you out. If you do have any other ideas or something that really helps you out or something that you use to identify wood, please let us know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear those. 
If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. All those things really do help out the channel, and thank you for that. That means a lot to me. If you do want to help out even more, you can help out by joining on Patreon, and all of that money does go back into this channel and keeps us going, so thank you. I think that's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day. I don't know about you, but I'm bored.